Once there lived a family not too far out from where we all lived. The Darling family. The Darling family had three children. Their names were Jan, Michael and Wendy. Wendy would always tell her mum how Peter Pan would always play the flute in her room. Her mother would always tell her that she was imagining things, but couldn't help but notice the leaves in the room, which always confused her a bit. Wendy would always say that the leaves fall off Peter Pan. One night, when their parents went out for the night, the kids were left home all alone, and when they got sleepy, they all went to sleep. Peter Pan silently entered their room and started looking for the leaves he had left behind. At that moment, Wendy woke up. Peter Pan, I was waiting for you. Nobody would believe that you're real. Wendy gave back the leaves she had been hiding for Peter. She really liked Peter, and so they sewed his leaves back on his clothing. Wendy, would you like me to tell you an amazing adventure story? I don't want to hear about an adventure. I want to live one, Peter Pan. Right at that moment, Peter's small fairy friend, Tinkerbell, entered through the window. Well, of course. I knew you'd be here. Are you getting ready for a new adventure without me? You know it's not possible for me to do anything without you. Wendy woke her siblings up. Her siblings looked at Peter Pan and Tinkerbell with great confusion. Well, are you ready to fly? Tinkerbell scattered her fairy dust and off they went floating into thin air. And all together they left the house. The kids headed towards Neverland at once. After a long journey, they arrived at Neverland, and there they were. The mermaids, wild animals, Indians, pirates, and the lost boys were there too. Amongst them all was the most dangerous of them called Captain Hook. Captain Hook was Peter Pan's enemy. The reason for this was because when they were fighting, Peter cut his arm and a huge crocodile ate it. Along with his arm, he also swallowed his watch and because of this, the crocodile would always make a tick-tock noise. And so Captain Hook would always know if the crocodile was near from the noise. When looking around with his binoculars on the deck, Captain Hook spotted Peter Pan and kids looking at him from the top of a hill. He immediately ordered the men to fire the cannons. It was very hard for Peter Pan and the kids to get away from the cannons. Tinkerbell, you take the kids to a safe place. I will deal with Hook. Tinkerbell was very jealous of Wendy, so she wanted to keep her away from Peter Pan. With some made-up excuse, she left Wendy back on the hill and brought Jan and Michael to a safe place down at the beach. The lost boys who lived on the island saw Wendy from afar, and thinking that she was an enemy, they wounded her. At the same time, Peter Pan was fighting with Captain Hawk. But seeing the crocodile that got his arm suddenly reappearing, Hook ran away in fear. Ah! Whilst Peter Pan was coming back, he saw Wendy lying on the rocks wounded, and he was very upset. And the lost boys were very sorry when they realised that the girl that they had wounded was Peter Pan's friend. I have left the kids in your care. Tinker Bell was so sorry. She also realized that what she did was wrong. I am so sorry, Peter. This will never happen again, I promise. Lost Boys made a beautiful home for Wendy and her brothers. 
At night, they all would sleep in the house underneath the trees, listening to Wendy's stories. And Peter Pan would keep guard in front of the house. One day, when they were resting on the rocks, they spotted the pirates approaching. The pirates took the Indian chief's daughter hostage. Peter Pan and the boys went after to save the chief's daughter. And there was a big battle between them and the pirates. In the end, they saved his daughter and brought her to the chief. After that day, the Indians, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys became very close friends. In fact, the chief ordered two of his best men in Peter Pan's command to guard the boys. Of course, Captain Hook was furious about this. One day I will beat you, Peter Pan, and you will not be able to get away. One night, when Wendy started to tell the story of her family, Peter realized how much she and her brothers missed their home. So he told them that they could go back if they wanted to, but that he wanted to stay. When they all were packing up for their long journey, they were attacked by the pirates. The pirates caught the boys after they set up a trap to the Indians and captured them. Peter Pan was sleeping at home not knowing all that happened to the boys. Captain Hook saw him sleeping. But he could not open the door to Peter Pan's treehouse. Still, he poured the poison in the bottle he was carrying under the door, causing Peter Pan to sleep for hours. Peter Pan slept one whole day, and when he woke up, Tinkerbell entered. After she told him all that had happened, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell went out to rescue the boys. When they arrived to the Happy Rock, the pirates' headquarters, they saw that there was no pirate on guard. And when they went over to the other side of the rock, they were shocked from what they saw. Wendy, Jan and Michael and the last boys were all tied up to the poles and Captain Hawk was holding a torch in flames. Say your last words. <laughs> As their eldest, Wendy began to talk. Dear friends, my last words to you will be the words your real mothers would have told you. If they were here, they would have told you not to be afraid and be courageous to face your death. Don't be afraid. Kindness always wins. Always. Captain Hook got very angry with Wendy's words, so he brought her to the boat and tied her to the big pole. At this moment, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell reached out to save the boys. At the same time, the Indians and their chief came to help. This made Peter Pan so happy, because with their help, they rescued the boys. It was now time to get Wendy. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys got on Captain Hook's ship, where only a few pirates remained. And when they realised that they would be beaten, they jumped off the ship. There's nowhere to hide, Hook. Surrender! Peter Pan and the Lost Boys started to charge towards Captain Hook, pushing him to walk backwards. And suddenly, he heard the noise, the one noise that he was most afraid of. When Captain Hook looked back in fear, he saw the croc waiting for him to fall down into the water. Help! In a flash, he ran to the other side of the boat, jumped and started to swim as fast as he could. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys began to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> From that moment on, Hook's ship belonged to the Lost Boys and their captain was Peter Pan. The crew is ready for your orders, Captain Peter. Sail away! 
The boys untied the ropes and the sails blew up with all their might. Tinkerbell, fly us away to the home of the Darling family. The kids were very happy to hear this. Wendy, Jan and Michael were going to reunite with their parents. They had dearly missed. When Tinkerbell sprinkled the fairy dust, suddenly the ship was airborne and started to fly in the sky. Wendy was restless to get home and tell her parents all about Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and the Neverland. From that day on, Neverland was going to be their second home and Peter Pan their best friend. Once upon a time, there lived a selfish and shifty fox in the forest. Because he was always after something shifty, none of the animals trusted this fox. Nobody made friends with him. After a while, having no friends, the fox moved to a cave in the mountain next to the forest. One day, flying from the cold parts of the world, a stork came by. The fox was very happy that he finally found a friend. He immediately went next to the stork. Welcome, my dear stork. Do you want to be friends? Sure, but you're the shifty fox. How can I trust you? Of course you can. I have no friends here, but I think that we can be best friends. After a short while, bored of eating alone, the fox invited his new neighbour, Stork, to dinner. Happy about this invitation, the Stork went joyfully to the fox's house. The soup that the fox had prepared smelled delicious. Preparing the table, the fox poured the soup in large bowls. The stork sat down on the table and the fox sat right across her. Bon appetit! I hope you like my soup. The fox was enjoying his soup from the bowl. But the stork could not figure out how to eat it from this large bowl. Although she could put her beak into the bowl, she could only get one or two pieces of rice. At the time the stork had only a couple of rice pieces, the fox had finished his meal. Thinking that the fox was very unthoughtful, the stork was very upset with him. But because she was the guest, she stayed quiet. I should be going, my friend. Thank you for dinner. But you haven't even finished. Didn't you like it? Never mind. I'll eat yours too. As the stork was leaving, the fox had already begun to eat the stork's soup. The stork sadly went home. She could not sleep all night because she was still hungry and very mad at her friend. We are two different animals. The fox needs to understand and accept this. But how? After putting some thought into it, the stork had an idea. She was going to teach the fox a good lesson. In the morning, she approached her friend with great excitement and invited him to dinner. The fox, of course, was very happy for his invitation. Thank you very much, neighbor. I'm so glad we're friends. After preparing the food, the stork selected a long and narrow bottle for herself and for her friend, the fox. The stork prepared rice for her friend and then she set up the table. She also put the water into a narrow and long bottle. After a short while, the fox arrived. I'm very hungry, my friend. Let's sit and start eating. The two friends sat down at the table. Well, bon appetit! The fox tried to eat from the narrow bottle in front of him, but couldn't. He couldn't even drink the water. The stork, on the other hand, could easily enjoy her food with her long beak. 
While the fox was trying to use the fork to get some rice, the stork finished all her food. And seeing how stunned the fox was, she asked, Ah, uh, my dear friend, you're not eating. Didn't you like it? If I could eat it, maybe I would. This bottle is not for me. With your long beak, you can easily get your food. But with my mouth, I can't. The stork was expecting this answer. Oh, my dear friend, do you remember that I left hungry after your dinner the other night? Because you had used bowls on the table, which weren't suitable for me. Suddenly, the fox realised his mistake. He was really sad that he put those large bowls in front of his friend, the stork. I'm really sorry, my friend. I could not think that you would not be able to eat from those bowls. It's okay, dear fox. At least now you understand me. We have to learn to respect each other's differences. After this, the stork brought a large plate from which the fox could eat easily and put his food on it. The fox enjoyed finishing his food. When it was time to leave, the fox had an idea. Hey, stork! Let me take one of your bottles home, so when you come to eat with me, you can eat your food easily from that narrow bottle. They don't call you the shifty fox for no reason. If you use your mind and shiftiness for good things like this, you and your friends will always be much happier. The fox and the stork began laughing joyfully. <laughs> <laughs> Months had passed before leaving to fly to warmer climates, the stork came to say goodbye to her neighbour, the fox. Being left alone, the fox returned to the forest. But he never forgot the stork's words. After that, he was never selfish and he became very good friends with all the other animals.